Hi, and welcome back to my kitchen. I've seen so many beautiful wafer paper cakes lately, so for today's tutorial, I thought I would show you this really awesome wafer paper technique. I just love how easy these are to make, and every single one turns out just a bit different, and I think they add such a unique touch to a cake. And I'm also going to show you how you can use them to decorate this really pretty uh, whipped cream cake. So let's get to it. So here's what you will need to make the sails. You're going to need some wafer paper, of course. I bought this one on Amazon. It's a pack of 100, so it lasts a while. Wafer paper is just a thin type of paper and it's edible, so you can eat it if you want. You'll need a cake pan or any other type of container to soak the wafer paper in. I like to use one of my round cake pans. A spray bottle filled with water. I've got this small one that I always use for my whipped cream cakes anyway. Then to color the paper, we want a powder food coloring. I'm using this purple color today. If you're wanting to use a gel coloring, check the ingredients to see if it contains sugar, because if it does, you might have trouble with the paper sticking to the pan in the process. And then you'll also need a non-stick frying pan. To add some details to the sails later, you can use either this gold luster dust and mix it with a bit of clear alcohol or lemon juice to make a paste, or what I'm going to use today is this edible gold metallic paint that's all ready to use. I buy these in my local cake supply store, but you can also buy similar ones on Amazon, so I will link those for you in the description box. And then you also need a small paint brush. I'm going to start by filling my cake pan with water about halfway, and then I'm adding my purple coloring. You don't need a lot, I'm adding in about a quarter teaspoon and I'm adding the same amount into my spray bottle. This will make the water in the bottle a more intense purple, and so this way we'll get that lighter and darker shade of purple on the sails. You can even add a different color to each of the waters and get a two-toned sail. Just mix the water until the coloring is dissolved, and then we'll move on to our next step. Next, we'll take our wafer paper and just rip it into different sized pieces, you can do larger or smaller pieces or a mixture of both, which is what I'm doing today. Try making different shapes to make them even more interesting. You also want to be aware that the wafer paper will shrink quite a bit yet, so make your pieces a bit bigger than you actually need them. Take your frying pan and set the oven on medium to high heat. I've got all my wafer paper pieces here and I'm going to take just one and dip it into our purple water. We don't want to soak it, just dip it once completely and take it out right away and lay it into our hot frying pan. You can see it's starting to crinkle up immediately and shrinking already. I'm now taking my spray bottle and spraying more of that purple water on it and it's giving me a slightly darker shade on top. You can add more until you have your desired shade. I like to turn them as soon as I'm able to so I can spray the water on the other side too so I get both sides matching. What we're doing here is just drying out the wafer paper again. We just want to leave the paper to dry out for a minute or two until you can easily touch it without it feeling sticky. If the frying pan gets too hot just turn the heat down to low. We don't want to actually fry them, we just want to dry the paper out. So I'm taking another piece of paper dipped in water and placing it in. Now the first sail is ready. It's still a bit flexible, so I can adjust it a bit if I want to or leave it just as it is. So I'm just going to place it on a cooling rack and then I continue with the rest of the wafer paper, just repeating the same steps for each.
Now, if you see these brown spots happening, it means your pan is either too hot and you need to turn down the heat or with the water we sprayed onto the sails, some of it gets on the pan and starts turning brown and this will make the sails have these brown spots. So all you need to do is just wipe down the pan with a dishcloth or paper towel and you can continue making your beautiful sails. Here's all the different sails I made today. I just love how they all look different. Now I'm just going to leave them out to fully dry and set for about 12 hours or overnight. If you're working with buttercream cakes, you can already use them to place on your cake at this point, but when you're using whipped cream to decorate your cake, we just want to make sure they are completely dried out and that way they will keep up really well in the cake for up to a few days even. They're already super pretty and you could totally use them to decorate your cake just like this already, but I'm going to add more details on the edge with my edible gold paint before I'll leave them out to dry more. Just take a little bit of the paint on your paintbrush and start brushing it on the edges. I like to paint the lighter edges and also paint a bit of the texture in the center. If you try this technique, I would love to see all the different colors you come up with. Send me a picture on Instagram or email it to me. I always love seeing your pictures and seeing what you guys make. Now you can add the gold details to all the different sails you've made or just add it to a few or you could even paint them with a different color. There's just so many ways to get creative with these and so just have fun with them. When you're done painting your sails, just remember to leave them out to dry for another 12 hours before you use them to decorate your whipped cream cakes. It's the next day and I had these resting on my countertops overnight and they are now ready to use to decorate my whipped cream cake. So to decorate the cake, besides the sails, I'm also going to use different sizes of white pearls and this edible gold leaf. It's a super thin sheet that again is edible, so perfectly safe to eat and I'm going to use another paintbrush to place it on the cake. So I've got my cake here already covered in whipped cream. This is a two layer eight inch cake for reference. I want to add the sails on the front of the cake to one side, so I always like to check for the best front view of my cake. Now take any wafer paper sail and place it on the cake. It will stick to the whipped cream beautifully. If you're decorating a buttercream cake, you can add a little dollop of buttercream to the sail and then place it on the cake that way. Now for the top of the cake, press the sail into the whipped cream slightly until it's stable and stands on its own nicely. I like to start with a few of the larger sails and then add the smaller ones and fill in any spaces. Once you're happy with the sails, take the gold leaf and gently place it on the cake, making sort of a pattern by placing it around the sails on top and bottom and a few random ones here and there. Now with the pearls, I like to also kind of follow on that pattern and place them around the sails and gold leaf and then just have a few pearls going on the sides and top randomly. But you can definitely play around with this and find what best fits your style or the cake design you're doing. Now to finish off this cake, I'm going to add this pretty cake topper I'm inserting it on one side so I don't completely hide our beautiful sails on top. And there you have this really pretty cake. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and try out this fun wafer paper technique. I would love to hear from you guys what other cake techniques you would like to see in my next video so let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again in my next video.